The new blocks are cool. All the goat horns are dumb and useless though. They have no use besides making a sound that does nothing. And good news for you, Mr. Sir, Henrik Nieberg tweeted confirming that although the goat horn and copper horn featured in the latest Bedrock beta, they are somewhat experimental and they can't guarantee that it'll be a part of 1.19. That's right, they might be removing the goat horns from another Minecraft update, which would of course be tragic. And so we need to go through and find a way to keep the goat horn in the game by making it extra useful. And so here are some ideas. Use for the goat horn. More ally interactions, such as it following you and bringing you gifts if it has nothing in its hands. Boom, hire me Mojang. I think that's a good idea. The ally is clearly a mob that cares about noises. This is an item that can clearly be described as producing noises and maybe not too much else. And so as a result, the ally and the goat horn seem like a really great pairing, potentially. In fact, a lot of this update seems to be about noises. However, the second idea here is what if we could use the goat horn in a dispenser? Doorbells would be great. Love this idea. By the way, your profile picture looks like the mangrove wood texture right now. Anyway, the third idea is make pillagers dance when you use one of the goat horns. That's a fun idea. They clearly love the goat horn because they use it when they summon a raid, so they should love the fact that you basically upgraded it and turned it into a saxophone. Or we could turn it into an achievement for getting every goat horn. I'm personally going to be collecting all of the goat horns regardless of the achievement, but I think it's a fun idea. Also a fun idea is having them be able to be placed on helmets, maybe for cosmetic use or to provide a little extra armor or durability since goat horns are hard in real life. This is also a fun use for them. I mean, everyone knows the Skyrim helmet stereotypically does have horns. Why don't we do that in Minecraft? Or how about we go extreme and we make the goat horn useful for gameplay by dealing 75 health of damage and charging the horn to keep the musical aspect while letting you use it in sticky situations by blowing into it and getting a buff that lasts 10 seconds and give all players within a nine block radius triple damage. And uh, yeah, these are all very over the top ideas. So how about this one? Personally, I I don't think that everything has to have a purpose. Horns are fun and whimsical enough to stand on their own. So there's been an interesting argument in the Minecraft community recently about whether every item and mob should have a purpose. I mean, Mojang does love to add their useless mob every update, and is that something that is good? Is where the debate kind of comes in. However, the goat horn is not a useless item. We have had it confirmed from King B Dogs himself. He directly said that, yeah, its purpose is to be a musical instrument. And honestly, if you look at all of the variants and the fact that they can be turned into copper and it becomes kind of a skillful instrument at that point, I actually do agree with that. I think the purpose is mostly just the fact that you can communicate with other players and you can have these signature noises that you can do more things in game with. They added emotes to Minecraft, theoretically, so you can communicate more of your actions, and I think adding goat horns could also do the same. I mean, we wouldn't say the music disc is worthless or useless because it does nothing besides make parrots dance, and you wouldn't say the note block is useless because it can only be used with redstone. I just also think it's about broadening that purpose to be as wide as possible. But maybe that's crazy talk. Speaking of crazy talk, the next comment comes in from Bus Change Knee. Is Bus Change Knee? Uh, I think the mud itself needs to be way more brown. This is something I've heard from a lot of people. The mud texture in Minecraft right now is not what you picture when you see mud. However, we have heard from one of the texture designers of Minecraft that the mud will stay gray. I think if we ever add brown mud, it has to have a better place somewhere else and those opportunities would be spoiled now if the mangrove mud was brown. Furthermore, gray mud has good contrast with wood and foliage, which makes it clear where the floor is. So gray mud is here to stay and I do have to agree instinctively looking at mud blocks, I think they should be brown. However, when we see the new mangrove swamp, which is what really matters because that's where you're going to find it, I think that's when we can make our judgment because it does sound very strange to just say, uh, yeah, we're going to make the, the mud a color that mud doesn't look like because then we can make mud that does look like mud later. But I think when we see the mangrove swamp in some future beta or snapshot, it will all make sense. Or maybe it won't, but either way, it'll be fun to look at. By the way, the next comment comes in from uh, Zippy Zip and it reminds me of that comment saying that we should make pillagers dance because uh, Zippy Zap asked that the dancing pillagers or hoglins from 1.16 snapshots should come back and be triggered by the goat horns. However, a fun fact you might not know is the piglin dancing is still a mechanic, at least in the bedrock version of the game, and so when the piglins kill the hoglins, they celebrate by sometimes doing this, and it's just it's just ridiculous to look at. Speaking of things that are ridiculous to look at, your comments, like this next one. By the way, this is Q&A Saturday, the weekly series where I answer your questions, and it's only sometimes on a Sunday. But yeah, this next comment comes in from Sammy Evro 118 who 
says, me who is colorblind, wait, the crimson woods is not red. It's funny, I totally picture crimson planks, you know, crimson wood being red because the tree on the outside is red, but on the inside, it's not actually, it's actually more of a purple. And so the best way to put it is with this meme right here. He does exactly what I do, but better. The crimson planks are now next to useless because they're actually purple, while the actual crimson wood in Minecraft or the actual red wood in Minecraft is the mangrove. And my God, every time I look at mangrove, I'm just like, this is such a good wood palette. I genuinely think it's the best one they've added yet. Uh, I, 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 I think between that and warp, we finally have that nice blue red texture set. But I also think for the overworld, we're just getting a big upgrade in terms of wood. I'm so glad they went with a different mangrove texture in the end. And I think it's interesting because I've heard lots of similar praise about mangrove. And I think the trick to making a universally loved Minecraft feature is make it really bad at first, like how mangrove wood was going to be just jungle, and then make it good afterwards. Side note also, did anyone else not know that jungle is kind of a pinky wood? I saw a few comments calling it pink and I thought that was dumb on the surface, but then I looked at it and it really does look surprisingly pink, right? Anyway, you know what that said, let's move into the next comment here because Basil Zuby asks, why hasn't anyone thought of just bringing a bunch of night vision potions to combat the darkness effect in the deep dark? And this seems like a smart idea on the surface. However, the darkness is a separate effect to the way night vision works. I'm pretty sure at least. Let's go test it actually. Okay, this is so much weirder than I was expecting. I just assumed it wouldn't work. I didn't think it would go blue. Well, apparently I'm wrong, and in the current build, you can just use night vision to wipe out the darkness effect. I imagine this will be changed by the final release. It looks so weird, it has to be a bug, but on the off chance that it's not a bug, I think you just accidentally came up with the best idea ever, Basil. <laughs> Speaking of the best idea ever, uh, Hidden Valley disagrees with the idea that releasing a Minecraft map was the best way to promote a fashion brand, because Lacoste, alongside Puma, have released Minecraft maps in the past month, and so they say, not gonna lie, the map looks very fun and entertaining, the only issue is providing slash assuming that everyone or the majority of people who play the map are going to visit your site and buy something is 90% unreliable. Basically saying, producing a free Minecraft map is great, but why do they think this is going to sell clothes? And this is the magic of advertising in my opinion, 90% of people are never going to do anything you tell them. This is true for even literal laws where you threaten people with violence and death if they don't do something. Still, you know, people do lots of illegal things all the time, and so the idea of advertising is not to insist that everyone has to do something, but instead to make you slightly more susceptible to be doing something. So uh, the idea is if maybe a hundred thousand people download your marketplace map, maybe a thousand of them buy a shirt, or realistically more like a few hundred. And the idea is the other 99,000 who don't buy a shirt or a shoes or whatever fashion companies sell these days, I don't know, like glasses without the holes in them, or glasses with extra like lines put in them, or like Ikea bags or whatever else. But whatever they sell, they're gonna try and convince you to buy those things. And and uh, the idea being that you're just going to be slightly more susceptible to either the next time you see advertising or the next time you see them in a store. Obviously, if it's a brand new product, they have to start from scratch. But the reason that Coca-Cola advertises, even though everyone already knows their product exists, is because when you see someone quenching their thirst with some Coke, the next time you see it in a store, which will be very common because it's everywhere, you're going to be more likely to buy it. And then, boom, the magic money machine keeps printing itself. Speaking
Speaking of magic money machines that keep printing themselves, when is the next Seed Sunday coming, says FF the Crafter. And uh, yeah, sadly, Seed Sunday is one of my favorite series, but it goes up and down a lot as to what people expect from it and how well it does with the YouTube algorithm or whatever else. And so uh, the next Seed Sunday is going to be after 1.18.20 comes out because there is a new Minecraft update that is going to massively increase the number of seeds. It's going to change speedrunning entirely, and it also means that now the weird collection of things that can be found is going to go up some substantial amount. And uh, obviously, uh, that, that involves a lot of tool stuff, and it involves typing in much longer seeds, but I think the trade-off might be worth it. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe we'll go back to using seeds that are only a few digits, uh, but personally, I'm very excited, 1.18.20, and the next seed Sunday will come out after that. It probably won't be on a Sunday either, but, you know, you shouldn't be surprised by that, given that it's Q&A Saturday on a Sunday right now. Also, the Let's Play is going to be up late. I'm, I'm climbing a mountain in Scotland right now. Have I mentioned that anywhere? I'm not sure that I have. Speaking of things I haven't mentioned anywhere, Jonathan Neves asks, what if you use a goat horn after defeating a raid? It changes all vexes that are still around in a limited area to allies as a victory for lore and in rescuing the allies from their captors. I wonder if the ally and the uh, vex thing is a genuine deliberate similarity by Minecraft or if it actually is somehow just a pure coincidence. I can't imagine it's the second one, given that if you look at the uh, mobs we voted for, there was also a copper golem, clearly a play on the iron golem, and there's also, you know, I, I feel like given that that is the case, it seems likely that they know about this. However, will they add a feature like that? The answer is probably not. Minecraft features, especially now in the current age of Minecraft, where there's dozens of developers working concurrently on different things, can be very tricky to work on for small features like that. Maybe it takes, you know, 10 minutes of effort and they can make that work, or maybe it takes a whole lot more effort because you're converting mob from one type to another. What if you have a name tag on a Vex and, you know, should, should that be renamed? And once you go for all these edge cases, it gets very complicated. And then ultimately you get to the point where you realize that, wait, how many people have vexes at the end of their raids anyway? How many people would then have a goat horn? How many people would get to enjoy this feature? You know, let alone know that it exists to begin with. And then you realize that, okay, that's not solving the useful problem for the goat horn whatsoever. But maybe that gets to the better part of this usefulness debate. Sometimes we say that everything has to be useful in Minecraft. And I've, I, I've always been a big proponent of this because I think that we need to have everything have a good purpose in the world. It needs to fit together in a way where you look at everything and you see its clear, defined purpose. The pig is great for getting pork chops, the sheep is great for getting wool, the cow is great for getting leather. They made each of these things have a set of purposes that then ties into everything else. You can technically avoid all of these mobs, you can get leather from villagers, you can get food from all sorts of other sources, and you can even get wool by combining four string together. This is how I've done it quite a bit in my Let's Play world. And so given that you can bypass all of these mecha mechanics, I think something not being inherently required for the end goal, like, you know, the, the goat horn doesn't need to be the one kryptonite weakness for the warden to be useful. Uh, it just needs to be something fun that you genuinely enjoy and you don't look at and go, ugh. Oh. This is an inventory filler that is doing nothing for me. And ultimately, uh, this uh, debate about usefulness is something we need to have it with ourselves in the real world. Being useful is a great thing to aspire to, and you probably should. However, that doesn't mean you have to be useful in every single way to every single person all of the time. You need to find the things that you're good at being useful in, and uh, that's okay if that's not as much as uh, maybe you're expecting. Sometimes we all just take a step back, we'll be better people. And maybe by being better people, we can find that we're more useful to each other that way anyway. With that said, Mario Bo asks, why is this unlisted? And to answer your question, I unlist live streams after I'm done with them because YouTube treats them as videos and so they've got really weirdly performing uh, stats because YouTube uses watched percent as a metric and what percent of a stream do you think people are watching? A two hour stream. Uh, oftentimes it's like five, ten percent. And as a result, they do really bad things for the rest of the channel. So you just kind of unlist the streams and if you want to find them, there is either the unlisted live streams playlist under the playlist section of the channel, but also there is now the community tab. It's it's very easy to find streams if you want to. I'm sorry that you have to click on the channel. I know it sounds sarcastic, but it genuinely is a little work to go through an extra click to find something. So if that is you, then maybe consider subscribing with notifications turned on because then you can use the notification that the stream went live and you can click on it afterwards and it will still take you to the stream now that it is unlisted. Pro tips of Toycat. Speaking of pro tips of Toycat, um, this is <laughs> a good question. Uh, what the heck is the merch that costs $9,999? So I posted a funny tweet being like, should I make these Toycat 
leggings because of course they're objectively horrible and uh, so many people said yes that I was like well clearly we need to make these leggings and then the the merch tool I was on accidentally made a yoga mat and then apparently that tool is directly connected to my YouTube channel so it was promoting leggings below it for so 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 long and then I didn't want people to buy this terrible yoga mat but there's no way to just remove a single item you have to remove all of them at once which is what we've now done but what I what I did at the time was like well we can basically remove it by making it $9,999 but instead that just draws more attention to the yoga mat and you know what I'm trying to say here I made a very big mistake this last week but two people did buy their toy cat leggings so we'll see how that goes in the end um yeah real real toy cat merch is coming soon a lot of people have been asking for it and I can assure you that the real thing is not going to involve a yoga mat or an airpods pro case and it's going to be a lot of fun but not as fun as David Sprower's question because yes the Q&A keeps going I just keep adding questions because why not I love the streams I love the flat world thing you've got going on right now please continue and you know what I hit a bit of a brick wall in terms of my super flat survival because I need to get 10 iron to make more progress so I can make a cauldron and a bucket and the only way of getting iron because there's no iron ore in a flat world because there's no terrain is of course to find zombies they have a 1 in 40 chance of dropping iron or so I thought but I actually did the maths this week and it's very depressing because according to the Minecraft wiki it's a 1 in 40 chance of getting any one of these free drops and so if you take the actual odds of getting any individual thing carrots potatoes or iron ingots it's about a 5 in 600 chance a 0.83% drop which means that if we do the maths on that which you better believe I did uh, the odds are at about 1 in 120 zombies will drop their iron I need 8 more iron ingots because I've already got 2 which means I'll have to kill 963.8 zombies let's call it 964 to be sure and that means that even if I kill a really high estimate of 40 zombies every single night in Minecraft that still means I'll take 25 days in Minecraft and therefore 8 hours and a bit just to kill the number of zombies I need to make progress which would be insane I've only got a wooden sword it's gonna be the most painful 964 zombie kills ever which is why we might stream it and so, yeah, that's the logical continuation. The next episode has to be literally just killing 964 zombies. But if I did it, I would feel pretty damn useful, am I right? Actually, I'd feel the opposite. I feel like I just wasted eight hours. But you know what I haven't wasted eight hours on? This outro. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Consider subscribing because I'll see you next time. Goodbye.